the last time, okay? So the wave is 0 0.02. The height now will be equal to uh, 0 0.065 minus y. Why is that? Because the area we're going to concern is this area, okay? All right, then it's moving towards the what? That's why it's moving towards the centroid. The area increased towards the centroid. That's why the analysis, just to recap, the analysis start from y variable maximum. Okay. So this is your left and right. This is your width, and that's your depth. And the y bar is equal to 0 0.065 plus by y multiplied by 0 0.5. Okay. So this is. Uh, what we got. So if we were to uh, tidy things up, so this will be equal to 2 times by 0.2. So this is 2 times 0 0.2 times 0.5 is equal to 0 0.02. Multiply by 0 0.065 squared is equal to uh, 4.225. Right, then the uh, last one is minus, right, so minus uh, y squared. So finally, this will be equal to 0 0.02 times 4.225 power minus 3 is equal to 84.5 times 10 to power minus 6 minus by 0 0.02 y squared. Okay, did you all see this number before? Hello? 84.5 times 10 to power minus 6 minus by 0 0.02 y squared. Have you all seen that number before? Yeah, on the top left. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well done. Okay, so the first moment of area for the Top section above the centroid and below the centroid is the what? Is the same. Okay. Right? For the web section. Yeah. For the web, not for the flange. Okay. And this can be explained why. Because the web thickness is the what? Is the same. Okay. So from here, I want you to observe that. So from here, we can find the shear XY web bottom. Or we a uh, bottom web. Is equal to so remember why I told you V and I are constant. So V and I are constant. I can copy copy from there. Right? V is ninety times ten to about three. I is five point uh, eight one three three times ten to power minus six, and then uh. Q is equal to 84.5 times 10 to the power minus 6 minus 0 0.02 y squared. And then the thickness is twice for left and right, and then you have 0 0.02. And then you bring it here. here. So it's exactly the same for the top and bottom, okay, for the web. So this is also equal to 32.705. Times 10 to power 6 minus by 7.7409 times 10 to power minus 1i y squared. Okay. All right. So from here, we are going to sketch. Okay. We're going to sketch how the shear stress okay, is distributed. Okay. So we're going to sketch. All right. So we're going to sketch this now. So we are going to have y, all right, and then we're going to have our axis over here, right? So this is just a sketch. I don't know the magnitude, but I'm only going to do a sketch. So we, this is your shear x y. Sorry, that is your y. This is your shear x y. I think I put my <laughs> I'm not very sharp today. So over here, this should be at, I'm going to eyeball this, okay? 
So this is zero. Over here is 0 0.035 meters. Then over here is 0 0.065. Okay, you can put it minus. Does not really matter whether you put plus or minus because at the end of the day, when you square this, right, the sign don't mean anything at all. Right. So from here, right, we draw our distribution, we sketch out. So this is our first sketch, right? So this expression, hold on, let, let me go. Then it'll go up, right? And then it'll reach a maximum at the centroid and then come back down, right? So now, so if I were to divide this, if, if now we are, we, are, we, are, we, are, we are to divide this, okay? We are, we, are, we are to divide this, okay? All right, we divide this accordingly now. So this is our, we call it our flange. I miss another line. From here to here is our top web. And over here onward, that is our bottom web. Okay. So mathematically, so let's look at the, the, the math, right? So mathematically, we know that this expression over here, the function over there, is shear x, y as a function of x, and this will be equal to this term over here. This will be equal to the 9.8426, sorry, 9. Point, if I can write down 9.8426 times 10 to the power minus 6, and then minus 7.7409. times 10 to the power of 9 y squared. And I, I think this one is also plus 9. Yeah, right. Yes? That, that, that shear is supposed to be a function of y, not a function of x, right? Yeah, you got it right. Thank you. Okay. And then from here, right? So the top web and the bottom web is the same equation. Right? Why is it the same equation? Because it's going to be what? Continuous. Yes or no? Right? It's continuous. What do I mean by continuous? If you see this line that I'm, I'm highlighting now, it's a continuous line. Okay? It's not a like stepwise function. I hope math they taught you stepwise function. Yes or no? So this is continuous. So that's where over here is shear xy function of y. You're right and it's equal to 32.705 times 10 to the power of 6 minus by uh, 7 7.7409, 7 okay, let me check, 7 7.7409 times 10 to the power of 9 y squared. Okay, so uh, Wei Ming asked a very, very good question. Now let's find, okay, let's use this equation to find first. Let's find the shear stress distribution at point A, okay? So point A, right, if you look at point A, this is where point A is, right? We may ask Eugene, which area do I use? So if you look at the intersection where the distribution is, point A is on this line, right? In terms of y distance. Right, so if you look at over there, there's going to be two what? Two answers. Is it going to be answer alpha? Okay, sorry. Is it going to be at answer alpha? Or is it going to be answer beta? Anyone, which one will you calculate? Alpha. No, you'll calculate beta. You want, the, you want to know the higher value, not the lower. I repeat again, you want to know the higher value at point A and not the lower value. Because what is going to fail, right? So I'm going to write down here. 
it is known that shear x y at point a alpha the stress is going to be less than shear x y point b or uh, point a okay point a beta right so you 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 will to you will have to what compute the higher value so to compute the higher value you have to use a what the top web equation okay so now let's let's do the top web equation so this is stress a am i clear yes or no does that make sense now Right, you you don't want to know. I mean, not you don't want to know. So what if you know the no value where actually the higher value is acting at point A? Okay, so the shear x y. Um, Eugene, how is it possible that at one point there's two different values? Because the thickness at point A there is two possible thickness. Oh, okay, so if it's a little. To the right, top. so so no, 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 nothing to do with little to the top. This a point a down here is exactly at the interface or the boundary between the flange and the web. It is shared with two thickness of zero uh, 160 millimeters and twice of what 20 millimeters. You take the smaller what you take the smaller uh, thickness. That's why over here you have a so called in math you call it a step function, yes or no. Hello? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why. Okay. So shear xy at point A to compute beta. So this will be equal to 32.705 times 10 to the power 6, right? Minus by 7.7409 times 10 to the power 9. Now the y value will be from the centroids, from the centroid. To that point, I think is zero point. If I'm not wrong, is equal to zero point zero one five. Okay, so zero point zero one five, and the whole thing is squared. So this will be equal to thirty two point seven zero five power six minus seven point seven. Hey, thirty two point seven zero. Hey, never turn on the calculator, and I started pressing the calculator. Minus by seven point seven four zero nine power nine times by zero point zero one five squared and i got 30 what do i get i get 30 points i better be sure i get 30.963 930 times 10 to about six pascal shearing stress okay let me do it again to be very sure uh, 32.705 power 6 minus 7.7409 power 9 times 0.115 squared. 30.963 times 10 to power 6. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do now, uh, I don't have enough space. Okay. I'm going to do this calculation based on, uh, okay, when you calculate Q at top web, why do you add the area of the flange? Okay, good question again. Why did I add area of the flange? Because the analysis starts from what? It starts from Y variable, right? It starts from Y variable max, right? So if I look at top, regardless whether it's a flange or web, it always starts from Y variable that is what? Maximum first, then you bring it in. So that is why these rules okay this rule is very important uh sir sorry to interrupt uh that's actually a question i had relating to that um when i'm uh, when i'm finding the y bar for example uh because i know the y bar has to be multiplied with the area to get the q right uh for homework number three uh question two uh when i was trying to get the y bar uh the total length or the total height of the beam was nine inches, right? And my Y bar was 5.7, but in the solutions, the Y bar is supposed to be 3.3. Like I got the, 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 the axis of the center, right? But they're different numbers. So should I start from the top coming down? Yeah, 
So okay. don't worry. I wrote down there hope, uh, question number two. I will do question number two. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I will. Do. So if you look at if you look at uh the homework. Okay. I did question number five posted online, and also did homework number six. Okay. Question five and question six. So now I will also do uh homework number two. Okay. okay. Thank you. Now.